So I'm going to be talking, giving a general overview of the reading test. So we're going to have four parts to today's session. We'll have an overview. Then we're going to have um, a bit of information about the different question types that you'll find on the IELTS reading test. Uh, then some information on how you can improve your reading. And then the final part will be some key points to remember when you're doing an IELTS reading test. So I see there's quite a lot of you here already. I don't know where you're coming from. Um, I can't see that information. I think Liz can see that. So welcome anyway. We're just going to wait for a moment to see if some more people join us. Uh, let me see if I can see these comments. Hold on. Let me open my comments box. OK, I've got someone from Colombia here. Pakistan. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. OK. I'm starting to recognise a couple of photos even, I think, there. All right. So shall we get started? Now, there's quite a lot of you watching already, so let's get on with it. And don't forget, if you can't stay for the whole time, then you will be able to come back to the IELTS official Facebook page and watch the whole video later, watch bits of the video, pick and choose as you wish. You can share it with your friends. You can tell people at work about it. Up to you. OK, so I'm going to be looking at my notes because there's a lot to remember. So today we're talking about the four that we're talking about the IELTS reading test. So let's see. The IELTS reading test is 60 minutes long. And in that 60 minutes, you have to answer 40 questions. So if we think about that with the maths, that's, you know, you really you've got an, a minute per question. So it's not an easy test to take. So the um, the academic paper and the general paper are different for the IELTS reading test. They have the same kinds of questions. They have the same number of questions. You have the same amount of time, but the texts are different and the questions are different. Same type of questions, different questions. So it's really important that you know what test you're taking and you make sure you're preparing and practicing the kinds of texts, the kinds of passages that you're going to find in your test. So the academic test is obviously going to be a more academic type passages. You're going to have um, more of. Um, you won't need to have specialist knowledge, but general knowledge, science, technology, that kind of thing. Whilst the general paper often looks at more social situations, um, understanding information about community, about services available to you in the area, that kind of thing will also come up in the general training paper. So we've got 40 questions in 60 minutes. So it's probably going to feel harder as you go through. The texts do get a bit harder as well as you go through the test. And so you will need to practice having that stamina, that focus, that really concentrating for a whole 60 minutes. You really don't have time to stop, look out of the window. No, you're going to be from the minute they say go until they say pens down at the end, you're going to be working your socks off. OK. Welcome to any of you who have joined us. I see there are, gosh, there are lots of you watching now. So um, we're talking about the reading test. OK, so if you've got any questions about what I'm saying as I go along, just pop them into the comments. And Liz is in um, in the office. She's monitoring all the questions and then she'll put them to me at the end. We'll try to get through as many of your questions as we can. But of course, we won't be able to do all of them. And any others, then we'll be able to follow up later on today. OK, so the whole video will be available soon after we finish. The whole thing will be available on the Facebook page and you'll be able to watch it again. Or if you've had to go away halfway through, come back and finish what you haven't seen. So we've just done a quick overview. So we've got 60 minutes 
40 questions, three sections in the reading test, lots of different question types which I'm going to go on to talk about and you have to put your answers onto an answer sheet. Now this is like the listening test but the difference is that in the reading test you don't get any extra time for transferring your answers. So you're welcome to write on the question paper but you will need to remember to very carefully put your answers onto the answer sheet as you are going along. You do not have time at the end to go back and put them on again. OK. Oh, somebody's got their test on Saturday. So listen very carefully and best of luck to you on Saturday. Right. So here are some quick facts. Um, each question in the reading test is worth one mark. There are no questions that are worth more than others. So they are all of equal importance. There is no extra time for transferring answers. We just said that. Um, there is no negative marking in IELTS. So what does this mean for you? It means always put an answer, even if you don't know what the answer is, just choose one. If it's multiple choice, choose one. If it's uh, true, false, not given, Choose one of the answers. You never know. You might get it right. And if you do get it wrong, you just it's just zero. It's not negative marking. There's no minus one. OK. Right. Um, oh, OK. To get your the same band score, you will need more correct answers on the general training paper than you do on the academic paper, because the academic paper is probably a little bit harder. So when you're doing band score conversion, each paper will have a conversion rate that will be worked out by the examining board. Um, and you will need to answer a few more questions correctly in general training to, to achieve the same band score. OK, if you've just joined us, welcome. We're talking about the IELTS reading test today. If you were here to, to talk about the speaking test, then you can go to the Facebook page and look at the videos. You can find a playlist of all the Facebook lives. You'll find the session that we recently did on the speaking test. There's a session about time management. Have a look. There's loads of interesting stuff there. And hopefully we'll be able to do more of these in the future and cover all the different areas of the exam as well. OK. So I can't see your comments at the moment. Hold on. Let me just move this. OK, right. So we're going to move on to part two of my presentation today of this Facebook Live. And we're going to talk, look at the different question types. OK, there are lots of different question types in the IELTS reading test. You might already know what I'm saying today, but you might not. So if you already know what I'm saying, you carry on watching. There might be something that you are unfamiliar with. And if you're new to IELTS, then maybe take some notes. OK, so we're going to start with uh, the different question types. So first of all, we've got multiple choice style questions. So this is where you have a selection of answers, normally A, B, C, D, that kind of thing. And you need to choose a possible answer. You may need to choose more than one answer. So please do read the instructions very carefully. OK. So with the IELTS reading paper, it's very counterintuitive. You must always look at the questions first. OK, at school, we're taught to read the whole text, understand everything, then look at our comprehension questions, then come back and look at the, the text again and find the answers, look for the same words, the keywords. The IELTS reading test is not like that. OK, don't go into the IELTS reading test and read through the entire text and then look at the questions because you do not have time. OK, so first of all, you need to look at the, the, the questions, look at the instructions. How many choices have you got in a multiple choice question? Is it one? Is it two? OK, then you need to look at the questions carefully, highlight the keywords 
and think about synonyms and paraphrases for those words because you're not going to find the key words in the text. That would be too easy. You're going to find the same information written in a different way. So it's testing your vocabulary. Vocabulary is so important in the reading test. Having a wide vocabulary will help you. So read the questions, paraphrase, then look at the different options. OK. Then you need to scan the text for specific information. So skimming and scanning are words that you're going to hear me say a lot. So scanning is looking through the text for specific information, matching dates, names, times, keywords, the synonyms of your keywords. And then you read around that point to find your answer. Choose your best option. Move on to the next one. OK. The answers will come in order. So question one will be before question two. The answer will be found in the text before question two, before question three. OK, not all of the IELTS reading test questions come in order, but uh, multiple choice style questions do. OK, so next. The question type that gives many people lots of problems. So true, false, not given. Identifying information. OK, you're going to be given a lot of statements and you're going to be asked if they're true, false, not given. So read the statements, underline the keywords, think about synonyms and paraphrases and think about what the whole statement means. OK, but it's the meaning of the whole statement that we're interested in for this kind of question. You need to understand the meaning of the statement so that you can find out whether it's true, false, not given. So what does true mean? True means that the same information as in the statement is in the passage, not the same words, but the same information. This is why it's so important to understand the true meaning of the statement. False is when the opposite information is given or different information. So it gives information about the statement, but it's not exactly the same. It's something different. Not given. This is the, the difference between false and not given is what gives people the most trouble, I think, with this kind of question. So false, some information is given, but it's opposite. It contradicts the statement and the text. Not given, there is no information that will confirm or contradict the statement. You can't say it's true or it's false, then it's not given. OK. Your own knowledge of a subject is not important here. So you're only thinking about what you can find in the text. Even if you know the answer, you have to leave all of that knowledge that you have about a topic. You have to leave it out. We're just talking about what you can find in the text that they're asking about. There's one a very good um, tip for this kind of question is to look for modifiers. So have you got things like all, most, some, um, occasionally, sometimes, always, quite, very. These kinds of modifying words that modify a meaning, they're going to be really useful clues to whether it's true, false, not given. OK. So welcome to any of you who've just arrived with us. We're talking about the IELTS reading test today. I'm Emma Cosgrave. I'm here as an IELTS expert today, giving you a general overview of the reading test. So we won't be going into lots and lots of detail on the different question types today, but you're welcome to answer to ask some questions which we will answer or try to answer at the end of the session. And don't forget, you can watch the whole thing again later on the Facebook page. OK, so next we've got um, questions that are yes, no, not given. So identifying writers views and claims. So much like the true, false, not given questions, these are yes, no, not given. So 
Number one, watch out that you're answering using the correct letter. You can use just a letter. You can use a Y or an N or an NG, but make sure you're doing the right one. If it's a true, false, not given question and you answer yes or no, your answer will be wrong. Just the same, if it's a yes, no, not given question and you answer true or false, then your answer will not be accepted. OK, so you have to be very careful with that. Now, a yes, no, not given question is all about the views or the claims of the writer. OK, whilst true, false, not given is about facts that you can find. The yes, no, not given is about opinions, views and claims. OK. But they use the same approach. So you read the statements. You paraphrase them, you make sure you fully understand the meaning of the statements. Then you scan the text for those key points so that you can find where the answer will be located. Then you read around and you try to decide, is the information in the text the same, the same view as the writer or exactly the same as what the writer is saying, only in different words? Is it opposite or contradicting what the right what the writer is saying so does your statement contradict with what the writer is saying in the text it gives information about it but it's different or is there nothing at all about it is it not given is there nothing to say whether the text agrees or disagrees with the views of the writer okay so these in both of these kinds of questions true false not given yes no not given your own knowledge of a subject your own opinions don't matter we're only concerned with what you can actually find in the text the answers will come in the same order so statement one will be found the answer will be found at the beginning towards the beginning or before statement two before statement three before statement four okay be very very careful completing the answer sheet okay make sure you write the correct answer true or false Yes or no, depending on what the question type is. This is such a silly but easy mistake to make. And please don't do that. OK. So I need to take a breath. Right. How are we doing with the comments, Liz? Are we getting lots of questions from people? I've lost Liz. She's disappeared. Anyway, OK, moving on now. Oh, she's just said, yes, lots of questions. I'm glad you're all asking questions. I'll try to answer some of them. All right, then. So we've got matching information. So this these questions are interested in. Can you identify specific information in the text? Can you find exactly what they're asking you to find. So you're going to read the question first. Always read the question first. Read the instructions very carefully. Then read the questions very carefully. Paraphrase. What do they mean? What other keywords, what synonyms might you find in the text? OK, so you're underlining the key words, but you're remembering I'm not going to find those key words in the text. I'm not looking for the exact same words. I'm looking probably for a, the same information expressed in a different way. So how else could I express the information? Find that information in the text. And then you're going to choose you're going to choose the letter that corresponds okay so not all the paragraphs will be used and the answers do not come in order for this kind of question okay so you're looking for specific information and then you're going to be writing down a letter that corresponds with where you found the information which paragraph did you find the information in and remember you've got to note down your answers on the answer sheet don't forget because when you come to the end looking back at your scribbles and your marks and your underlines and your paraphrasing and your synonyms, you might not remember. 
what the answer was. Or you might have changed your mind a number of times. So as you're going through, be sure to fill in the answer sheet. OK. Right. So we've got the next one. We've got matching headings. So you've got you'll be given a list of headings and you've got to match them to the different paragraphs. So this kind of question is testing your ability to understand the general idea, not the supporting details, but the main ideas of the paragraphs. OK, so you don't get sidetracked by supporting details. So this to, to do this. Uh, questions this kind of question you need to practice skimming now skimming is reading through quickly normally first par first sentence of a paragraph last sentence of a paragraph to get the general idea okay so it's the answers are not going to come in the same order so it could hop around here and there so you're going to look at the um at the headings Again, we're going to look for keywords. We're going to look for the meaning of the heading. There might be some that are very similar. You're probably going to get more headings than you need to use or more paragraphs and headings. There's never an exact match because there's, there's a little bit of a test going on there as well. And you're going to skim through the you're going to skim through the passage and look, looking for main ideas, matching main ideas of paragraphs with the the idea behind the the heading okay right we've got another kind of matching question as well this one is matching features from a list selection okay so you're given a list it might be names it might be words it might be dates but it's a list and you're going to be asked to match a set of statements with a list of options. They are, the, these questions are designed to test your ability to identify ideas that relate to each other. OK, so we're looking at how um, the ideas in the text and the ideas in the statements relate to each other, who said what, when it was said, that kind of thing. You're not going to be surprised when I tell you that you've got to start by reading the statements and you've got to underline the keywords and you've got to paraphrase. It's really, really important that you think of synonyms and paraphrases. How else might this idea be expressed? Locate the information in the passage using skimming and scanning techniques. OK, so you're looking at the general meaning of a paragraph and then you think, OK, it's probably in there. Then you're scanning that paragraph, looking for specific information. And then you're going to read around when you find the specific information and then you're going to note down your answer. And you're not going to spend too long on it because, remember, you've only got about a minute for each question. So. If you think about how much you've got to get done, you have to just trust yourself. You have to have the confidence that you're right. OK, you need to go into this remembering not to waste any time. Read the question, find the answer, read the question, find the answer, read the question, find the answer. OK. Sometimes you can use some options more than once in this kind of question. OK, so some so you've got to read the instructions very carefully. Sometimes you can only use an, the list options once, but sometimes you could use the list options more than once. So make sure that you have looked at the instructions and and very carefully checked what the question is asking you to do. OK, we're nearly through, but there are lots of different question types. OK, you can find more information on the IELTS website, the IELTS official website, IELTS.org. And you can find examples of past papers with these question types. And I want you to go and have a look at them and have a think about paraphrasing the questions, um, skimming and scanning to find answers, synonyms. If you do anything to prepare for your reading test, then improving your vocabulary is going to be a really good one. OK. Right. So our next question type 
is going to be matching sentence endings. So you're going to get the start of a sentence and you've got to match it with the correct ending of the sentence from a list of possibilities. You have more options than there are answers. So you're going to have uh, some very close to being right answers, but they're not quite like red herrings. So they're going to they're going to feel like they might be the right answer, but they're, they're not. So you, this you've got to concentrate with this one. Use your grammatical knowledge to help you in this kind of question. Your answer, the, the first half of the sentence and the ending, the, the start sentence starter and the, the ending, they must work grammatically together. So there may be that you don't really understand why the answer's wrong, except for that the grammar is wrong. That's fine. OK, you can use all of the, all of these things to help you. OK, so. You're going to read the sentence starters. Underline keywords, make sure you understand, think about paraphrasing, all that kind of all the usual stuff. Then you're going to read the possible endings and you're going to see if you can do it, any of them, without even looking at the passage. You might be able to just work out what the endings are. Then you're going to find the information in the text that you need. And then you're going to read it and you're going to go backwards and forwards to choose the correct ending to match the information in the text. OK, so you use the information in the text to inform how to match the sentences. Then you've got to double check that they work grammatically. OK, and just because you see some keywords, it has to work grammatically, too. There may be more than one answer with a very similar meaning that works grammatically. OK, so use that to help you. OK, now we're coming on to our final three question types. OK, so these are all using words from the text. OK, and they're also using your own grammatical knowledge to help you. So sentence completion, you'll be given some sentences with gaps in them. You need to, to read those sentences and find the, uh, the, the missing words from the text. But first of all, read the sentences and decide what kind of word is needed. Do you need an adjective, an adverb, a verb, a noun, a noun phrase, a name, a place, a time, a date? What do you need? OK, then scan the passage to find that info. And then choose words from the passage. The instructions will tell you how many words, probably no more than two, no more than three words. If you do use more than the number of words, you will get an automatically get a wrong answer. You get zero for that question. So it's very important if it says no more than two words, it's two words maximum. OK, if it says no more than three words, it's three words maximum. Hyphenated words count as one. And numbers count as one, I believe. We'll double check that. OK, the sentences must be grammatically correct. So again, you can't change the words from the text to fit the sentence. You have to find the words that fit. That fit and and are grammatically correct from the text. OK, this is going to be the same on our next category of questions, which is a completion of summaries of notes, flowcharts, tables. So again, you've got gaps in a text that you need to fill with words or, or information from the text. You need to find specific info in the text, not your own words to complete the summary or the table. So first of all, we're going to again, we're going to look at the information in the question. We're going to look at the table, for example. We're going to work out what information is missing. What kind of information are we looking for? And then we're going to go straight into the text and we're going to scan 
for that kind of information. We don't need to read the whole text. We're just looking for specific information. We're going to scan the text for specific information. Then we're going to read around. When we find the area that we're looking for, we're going to read around and use that information, find the correct words to transfer over into the summary, to the notes, to the table, to the flow chart. OK. Again, if it says no more than two words, it means no more than two words. OK, don't put three words because you'll get to zero, even if the two of the three words were the correct answer, you still will get zero. Grammar will help you here. And also the, the answers are normally located in one or two paragraphs of the text, not the whole passage. OK, so once you find the area that's relating to the table, to the flowchart, you probably find that all of your answers are located in one or two paragraphs. OK, so you don't need to keep reading from the start to the finish from the start. No, just find the information, focus, read around it and then choose your answers and put them in, move on to the next question. OK, so last, is that the last section? Yes, our last question type. Whew. Short answer questions. These kinds of questions normally come with um, texts that have lots of facts in them, OK? So they're testing your ability to scan for answers. So again, you have a word limit in the answers. So you have to read the instructions very carefully. No more than two, no more than three, no more than four. Follow the instructions very carefully. Use words from the text to answer the questions and watch out your spelling must be correct. If you're taking a word from the text and then you spell it wrongly on your answer sheet, guess what? It's a wrong answer. OK, so you must transfer those words that you've chosen very carefully. OK, make sure your handwriting is clear so that the examiner can see that you haven't made a spelling mistake. This goes for all the other answers as well, actually. OK, spelling matters. The questions for a short answer for this kind of short answer questions. They will come in the same order as the text, okay? So number one comes before number two, comes before number three. Read the questions, work out the type of word that's needed. Is it a verb? Is it an adjective? Is it a name? Okay? Then scan the text, locate the information, and then check your answers are grammatically correct. Use your grammar. Use your grammar to help you. Have you have you got a grammatically correct sentence? If you haven't, your answers, there's something wrong with your answer. You need to try again. OK. Right. That's the end of part two. So let me just see if there are any comments from Liz that I need to know about. OK, she said she, we've got lots of questions and uh, we'll move on to those very soon. Right, so I have a lot of students who ask me, right, the reading the reading test, I thought it was going to be easy. It turns out it's hard. I'm doing fine with my speaking. I'm doing fine with my writing. But reading is killing me now. I'm so bored of reading IELTS past papers and getting the answers wrong. What can I do to improve my IELTS reading? Well, First of all, we've got to work out, have you got, is the problem one of technique? In which case you need to look at each of the individual question types and practice the technique that you need to use. So is it, a, is it that you aren't skimming and scanning very effectively? Is it that you're going for a, you're getting confused in a heading matching activity, you're getting, uh, you get confused by all the um, supporting evidence in the paragraph and you're not looking at topic sentences, that kind of thing. Or is it that you can't find the answer because you don't have enough vocabulary? 
Sometimes it's just simply a case of not having enough vocabulary. And if you don't have enough words, you won't be able to find the synonyms. You won't be able to paraphrase the information. You won't be able to understand how the same ideas are written in two different ways. So we've got to work out what it is you need to improve. Do you need to improve technique? Do you need to improve vocabulary? Or maybe do you need to improve both? OK. So. First thing to do to improve your reading is to read, read a lot. Don't just read IELTS textbooks, IELTS past papers, but read all kinds of English. OK, this will not only help you to speed up, it will also help you to expand your vocabulary, to expand your grammar, to keep you thinking in English, to keep your fluency up. Reading a lot is good for all the skills. It's good for all, all for the speaking test, the reading test, the writing test, the lot. OK, good quality texts and novels, graded readers, magazines, they are all really useful. And nowadays on the Internet, you can find anything and everything to read and read for pleasure in English, too. If you need some ideas of what to read, then you can always have a look at my blog. I think Liz is going to link to it. And we have an article on there about being sick of reading IELTS stuff and what else can you read? So it's good. It's good to just read for pleasure. If you love reading in your own language, there's no reason why you won't love reading in English. And that's going to really help you. OK, it's going to really help you to get used to, to build up your stamina, because, of course, it's an hour of focused reading. But it's also going to just improve your vocab and get you used to, this, to, to reading all kinds of things. Um, increase your vocabulary. OK. To increase your vocabulary, you need to be an active learner, OK? It's not good enough to just say, oh, well, I, I read that word and now I've forgotten it. Or I can't, or, you know, I, I've heard that word before, but I've forgotten it. Or you find a new word, you translate it into your own language, and then that's it. So if you want to actually learn new vocabulary, you need to use it. You need to see it, hear it, read it, write it. You need to keep a vocabulary notebook. There's no getting around it. You, you need to note down new words. You need to um, put them into example sentences. You need to think about what other words they collocate with. You need to look up their meaning in a monolingual dictionary. The Cambridge Dictionary Online is a perfect place to start. You also need to draw pictures of the meaning to help you to remember it. So you need to translate it into your own language, but not just learning a list of English words, mother tongue words. It's never going to help you to use them or to understand them in context. OK. This Facebook page has plenty of vocabulary ideas that you could take away. But also when you're doing when you're doing your reading, if there's a word that you just you can't guess the meaning from context, that you need to stop unless you're doing a timed practice. But you need to take the opportunity maybe at the end to note that word down and then work on it. So look it up in a monolingual dictionary. Look it up in a bilingual dictionary. Write example sentences. Find out if it collocates with specific other words. Is it part of a phrase or verb? Is it used in particular situations? Is it a formal word or an informal word? Is it an academic word? OK, what are some synonyms and some antonyms? So opposite meaning synonyms, the same meaning paraphrases okay because now at this level if you're looking for a band seven or eight you need to have a very wide vocabulary you need to have a very good understanding of how the same ideas can be expressed in more than one way and don't forget this will help you in your speaking test in your listening test in your writing test as well it's not read just for the reading test this is going to help you with all of your english OK, so um, do do past papers. 
get yourself a book of past papers, get access to past papers from different websites. IELTS.org has got past papers. Do the reading tests. There's two ways to do a reading test. You can do the reading test timed so that you get used to it. If you don't have a whole hour, then just do one part. You just remember it's in three parts and they suggest that you do 20 minutes on each part. So give yourself 20 minutes and do all the questions for part one for that text. OK, so that you get used to how quickly you need to be able to read. But also. Do some without pushing yourself to do it quickly. Do some past papers and do them so that you can practice your technique or do them to find examples of paraphrasing. OK, so you're actively practicing the skills you need for the reading test aside from speed and use your vocabulary notebook make a note of these kinds of phrases that are coming up because they're going to be used again and again of course in in IELTS exams and take the time to look at why you have got answers wrong okay thinking about why you've made a mistake is going to help you to learn how to do it next time. All right. So how are we doing for time? All right. So finally, we're on to part four. Top tips. OK, again, that if you go onto my uh, if you go onto uh, my blog, you'll find an article about this. But here are five things for you to remember when you're doing your IELTS reading. Number one, very important. Don't try to re understand every word. You're not going to. It's impossible. During the test, it doesn't matter if you understand every word, so long as you can answer the questions that you're being asked. Forget about understanding every word. OK, there's another time and another place for reading carefully and understanding every word. Questions first then always read to find the answer. OK, you need to practice all of the different techniques for the different question types. Number two, key words. Remember, get into the habit of underlining keywords, but don't forget you need to think about synonyms and paraphrases for those keywords. You will not find the same keywords in the text. That would be too easy. Keywords are really important because they give you an idea of You've got to think about then how else you're going to see that information in the text that will help you find your answers. Number three, skimming and scanning. You've heard me use the word skimming and scanning a lot in the last 40 minutes. These are essential skills. OK, if you do nothing else today, Google skimming and scanning, go away, find out exactly what it means and exactly how to do it. OK, generally skimming is reading for gist. so quickly reading through something, just the first sentence and the last sentence of each paragraph to get the general idea. Scanning is looking for specific details in the text. OK, so looking for specific information, not reading everything, just looking for those particular bits and then reading around that area to find the answer to your questions. Number four, know the different question types. OK, have a strategy in place for each of them. Practice them. Make time to find examples and past papers with each of the question types in them. OK, because there that's when you'll be able to practice your techniques and that's where you'll be able to think about what you're what actually each question type is asking of you. You need to slowly go through, think carefully so that on the day of the exam, you know exactly how you're going to do it and exactly which ones you find easiest. Do them first. If you end up doing text three, part three of the reading test, and then going back and doing part one and part two, it doesn't matter. Do the question types that you find easiest first so that you don't run out of time, okay? And then finally, use your grammar, okay? Don't forget that answers need to be grammatically correct. If it's not grammatically correct, it's probably not the right answer. OK, so let's see if we've got any questions. Um, right. OK. Can you give me some more information about skimming and scanning? Well, hopefully I just have. Um, 
What's the best way to manage your time in the test? That's a very good question. Uh, we, the recommendation when you look online is that you spend 20, and also on the question paper, I think, is that you spend 20 minutes on each section. Personally, I would aim to do section one in 10 minutes, section two in 10 minutes, and section three in 15 minutes so that you've got time at the end to go back and do any questions that you really weren't sure about, okay? Um, but you have to just be confident and just go for it. Um, I would also recommend that you choose the question types that you find easiest to do first, okay? So if you're good at matching headings and there's a matching headings question, do that. But don't jump around from text to text because you'll end up reading it too many times so just have a look at the question types and decide am I going to do part one part two or part three first then do that whole section and then move on to the next one okay um what are the most common mistakes for the reading test reading everything <laughs> okay the most common mistake in the reading test is reading uh, sounds strange, doesn't it? I think um, people getting stressed because they don't understand every question, every uh, every word in the text and they don't understand everything. You don't actually need to understand everything in the text to be able to find the answers. Remember, you don't need to get 100% to get the band score that you need. OK, nobody gets 100 percent. So you will make some mistakes and there will be some questions that you can't answer. Don't panic. OK, if you panic, then you get yourself into uh, a, a, a panicking cycle. You're not going to be able to concentrate. Uh, is it OK to write yes, no, true, false in the short form? Yes, it is. But make sure you choose the correct one. And don't get them confused. Uh, when filling in the missing words, do you need to change the grammar or just write it down as it is? Just write it down as it is. OK, it will tell you in the instructions that you will find the words in the text. During the reading test, are you allowed to underline or highlight words? in the context. Yes, you'll have a pencil. You can do what you want, whatever you find easiest, OK? Um, I would expect at the end of a reading test for my paper to look a bit of a mess where I've been circling things, underlining things. Make sure that your answer sheet is very clear and very clean because that is what will go to the examiner. The rest of it, is just going to go is, is going to be shredded because the questions and the question paper don't get marked that also means that you need to transfer your answers don't forget you must transfer your answers it's not enough to just uh, circle the your a b or c on the answer sheet you need to transfer that information okay OK, uh, any suggestions for those who can't decide between false and not given? Well, this is very difficult. You are not alone. Whoever asked that question, you probably asked a question that lots of people are asking or thinking. So false is when you can find information about the statement in the text, but it does not match exactly. OK. Not given is when you cannot find any information that tells you about the the statement. OK, so there's there's no way to say true or false. So true is exactly the same meaning false. There is information about that statement, but it's not the same meaning. It says something different about that statement. For example, the statement says um, all animals eat during the day 
but the text says that um, most animals choose the choose to um, to hunt and and eat their prey in daylight hours. If they're all in the most, that's false. Okay, so they're not the same. Right, let me see another question. I hope I've answered your question. Um, is dialect important in the reading test? No, the, the, the texts will be written so that uh, they're for general knowledge. So they're not going to they're not going to have specific, you're not going to need specific information to be able to understand the text. If your English is, your your general level of English is of a high enough standard, you should be able to follow the texts because they will, they're the kind of things that are written for a general audience. So dialect shouldn't, shouldn't make a difference in a reading text. Um, are the missing words that we have to write written in the same order in the text? Yes, you're not going to pick one from over here, pick one from over here and put them together. You should be able to find them together. How do I go up a band? Oh, <sighs> everybody's biggest question. Practice, practice, practice. OK, work out why you're making your mistakes. OK, go back. Look at the mistakes you're making and think, is it vocabulary? Is it technique? Is it both? And every time you do a practice text, uh, practice test and you make a mistake, don't just get disheartened, but go and look at what was the correct answer? What did you do wrong? And how did they come up with that correct answer okay so you need to do some analytical work on your mistake what did you do wrong how can you improve next time what what do you need to to know for next time what kind of text is found in the in the writing in the reading test article or newspaper it could be it could be um if it's in the general training reading test it could be um it could be a poster it could be an information booklet uh for the academic test it will be an article from a from a journal or a new like the new kind of an, an academic textbook the kind of text that you might find in a textbook okay any tips on how it's possible to spend 10 minutes on passage one or two you just have to practice and get your speed right up okay or do 15, 15 and 15. That still leaves you 15 minutes at the end. Perhaps I was not generous enough with my time allowance. Do 15 minutes, then 15 minutes, then 20 minutes. And you've still got a little bit of time to fill in any gaps. OK, just be very careful that you don't spend. 40 minutes on part one and then panic and you can't answer part two and part three. Remember, each question has the same value. Each question is worth one mark. OK, so you need to give each question the same amount of attention. It's not like the writing where where task two is worth more than task one. But every question has the same value. OK. Should we make this our last question? OK, so our final question. Any recommendations on how to read good stuff on different topics? OK, go to. Um, places like the BBC, the New York Times. Um, science journals. Um, all of these uh, National Geographic, nature.com, 
any of these places you should be able to find articles on different topics okay remember the topics about for IELTS are not going to be current affairs they're not going to be political religious they're going to be quite general they're going to be um they're not going to be um you know current affairs because remember the test has been written it has been tested it has been discussed it has been edited it's a process so there's not going to be anything that's happening currently in the world but there will be general topics of general interest to um all areas of academia so anything you can find that's written for um an educated audience okay so it's not a tabloid newspaper it's not um gossip magazines it's going to be in serious publications it's going to be in textbooks it's going to be in scientific journals it's going to be in um broadsheet newspapers and you can also you can find past papers and you can read rather you don't even need to do the questions you could just read the art the articles in past papers for vocabulary building purposes okay and use them to develop your vocab and to see the kinds of topics that are covered. And also the IELTS official Facebook page has lots of references of good places. OK, so if you go back onto the Facebook page, you'll be able to find um, links to good articles and, uh, ref you know, information about where to find good things to read. OK, so Liz, how are we doing? Is that I think that's probably all we've got time for, isn't it, today? OK, so thank you very much for all of you who have joined today. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I look forward to the next time I get to do it. Don't forget, you can find the whole thing on the Facebook page later today, probably in the next 10 minutes. And you can pass it on to any friends who might be studying for IELTS or just studying English at a high level. And um, thank you for your questions. Any that we've not answered, we'll try to get get some comments onto the Facebook page later today. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Mm.